This screencast pertains to Module 2, Lesson 10. We're going to do some multiplication problems with uh, decimals as one of the factors to the tenths. We're going to look at that a few different ways, including the area model and a couple variations on what is similar to the standard algorithm. We'll also look at one of the homework problems and help you get through that because it's multiple steps and some of you might find it a little difficult. Here's number 1a. It says estimate the product. Use an area model and the standard algorithm. Remember to express your product in standard form. The first thing we need to do is do our estimate. And remember we round each of these numbers to their greatest place. The greatest place of 22 is the tens place, so we're going to round it to the tens place, and that would be 20. And 2 and 4 tenths, the greatest uh, place is the ones place, and we're, we'll round that to 2. And we will now find the product of those two rounded numbers, and we get 40. Notice that in each case we rounded down somewhat. So we know that our answer is going to be greater than 40. Let's uh, run through the area model. I'm going to pick uh, the tenths, the factor with the tenths, to go on the top of my area model. We're going to decompose just like we did with whole numbers. But I'm going to change this into tenths before I get going. So I know that 2 and 4 tenths equals 24 tenths. So we're going to, 1, turn it into tenths, and we're going to decompose it into 20 plus 4 tenths. We'll make our line. And we have 22, so we're going to decompose that. We have two ones, and we have 20 tenths. So let's do our work here. We're going to start with the upper right hand side and we have 2 times 4 equals 8 and 2 times 20 equals 40. Now we'll go to the bottom row starting with the right hand side once again. 4 times 20 is 80 and 20 times 20 is 400. We'll find our partial products. We have 48, and remember these are tenths, and we have 480, we'll find the sum of our partial products. And we get 528, these are tenths though. So we're going to have to convert them to standard form. And we know that 528 tenths is 52 and 8 tenths. We'll uh, do our standard algorithm. We'll see a connection between what we did here and the area model and our, our, uh, our standard algorithm. So again, I have 24 tenths times 22. We'll find the 2 times 2 is, 2 times 4 is 8, 2 times 2 is 4. And now we're going to multiply from the tens place, so we put our 0 in, because we have no 1's. And 2 times 4 is 8, and 2 times 2 is 4. We find the sum. And again, these are tenths. And we see that our partial products in the area model and in our standard algorithm are the same. And again, once we're going to convert this to standard form, 52 and 8 tenths. Now I'm going to look at this a different way here, and I hope it doesn't confuse you, but uh, it, it's important that we understand what's going on here. So I'm going to do this in the standard algorithm once again, but I'm going to do something slightly different. Let's choose a different color. So I have 2 and 4 tenths times 
22. And when I change that 2 and 4 tenths to 20, 2 and 4 tenths to 24, I'm in essence multiplying it by 10. So again, I have 24 times 22. And we'll very quickly work our way through this problem. Now, since we multiplied it, multiplied it by 10, our answer is 10 times greater than it should be. So what we need to do to get that back into our original form is to divide our final product by 10. And of course, we know the decimals right there. And we get 52 and 8 tenths. Our next lesson uh, after this one will emphasize that a little bit more. I hope it doesn't confuse you. Uh, but it's important that we understand what's going on from a number of points of view. So if we multiply our factor by 10, our answer is 10 times bigger than it should be, so we divide by 10. So we can look at this a variety of ways. We'll do one more problem. Again, I have to round these to find my estimated product. We shall round 3 and 1 tenth to 3 and 33 to 30. Note once again we rounded down in both cases and our estimated product is 90. The last problem I didn't compare that and I'll make sure that I do that this time. Again we're going to use the area model and I'll use the factor with the tenths on it on the top and we know that 3 and 1 tenth equals 31 tenths. And when we do that, we'll once again decompose. That equals 30 plus 1 tenth. We'll once again partition our rectangular area model. And now we'll take our second factor, decompose that into 30 and 3, and once again partition it into two rows. We're going to multiply 3 times 1, and we'll get a 3. 3 times 30 is 90. Now going to the bottom row, starting at the right hand side, I have 30 times 1, and I have 30, that's 30, and I have 30 times 30, and that is 900. We'll find our partial products, 93, 930. We will add the partial products, and we get 1,023. 1,023 what? Tenths. So we know that we can convert that to 102 and 3 tenths. Standard algorithm using this tenths, we have 31 tenths times 33 and we get 1023 once again as tenths and in standard form that's 102 and 3 tenths. Again, we'll look at our partial products. We see that, as we have for several days, we see a correspondence. It's important that we learn this thoroughly and be able to look at it from as many perspectives as possible. That leads to the ability to think a little bit more flexibly when we're working through more difficult problems. We'll now go and do it as we did the second exam or the uh, second. Uh, example of the standard algorithm in the previous problem. So what do I have? I have 3 and 1 tenth times 33. Now I am going to multiply one of the factors by 10 and I get 31 times 33 and we'll quickly work our way through that. Since we multiplied one of our factors by 10, our final product is going to be 10 times larger than the actual product should be.
So in order to get back to our original value, or the proper value for our original problem, we're going to divide our final product by 10, and we get 102 and 3 tenths. I hope that helps. Uh, you will see uh, exa more examples of what we have done in red in the upcoming lesson. Now let's look at one of our word problems. It says Rachel runs three and two tenths miles each weekday and one and five tenths miles on each day of the weekend. How many miles will she have run in six weeks? Hmm. Well, we know there's seven days in a week. How many weekdays are there? Those would be Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. That would be that would be five weekdays, and then we would have two days of the weekend, Saturday and Sunday. In order to do this, I'm going to first convert both of these to tenths. So I'm going to go weekday. Is thirty-two tenths in the weekend equals 15 tenths. Let's model this. We'll model one entire week. So we've got weekdays of which there are five each at 32 tenths. And I don't really have the room to write tenths in here. I'll just sort of uh, write tenths underneath. And we have weekends, of which there are two days, that are 15 tenths. Okay, uh, looking at this problem, uh, we see that if we put all these together, we have the total miles in tenths that Rachel runs in one week. Well, that's just one week. So think about this tape diagram. What operations do we need to perform to find the value for the entire week? And then we need to find the value for six weeks. And when we get done, we have to remember that our uh, we were calculating in tenths. So we're going to need to convert from our unit form in tenths to standard form.